challenge of the day. Okay. When you get an opportunity in this game, you make a play. Yeah. The playmakers on three. One, two, three. Playmakers. Touchdown, Kansas City. The Chiefs are right in the thick of it, baby. All right, welcome to this edition of Defending the Kingdom. A little different look here for you. We're just outside the draft room here in the practice facility uh, near uh, on the uh, Chiefs complex near GHA Field at Arrowhead Stadium. And the 2023 NFL Draft is underway. The first round uh, is in the history books. But first of all, Kansas City is just a it's just such splendor to see what Union Station, the National World War One Museum, uh, the Liberty Memorial, and just how that has been portrayed to the football world. Is, I'm just so proud of what Kansas City is doing here and what they've done. Yeah, I'm blown away by it. It was just amazing and fantastic. Ever since this got announced back in the summer of 2019, we were all excited. We knew Kansas City would show out, but just seeing it all, I think it's gone beyond all of our expectations. And it's so cool that Chiefs Kingdom represented the way that they did down at Union Station tonight. Coach Reed just mentioned that in his press conference, that it looked crazy uh, down at <laughs> Union Station to have all that red down there. And honestly, we just celebrated the Super Bowl again. We had a second Super Bowl parade just a couple, mo a couple months later. And uh, it's just so awesome to see how Kansas City showed out uh, for the draft here tonight. Now, well, let's go do it tomorrow. And the imagination and the setup and the artistry, uh, the lighting is just phenomenal. Uh, what the league has done and what Kansas City has done, it, feel, it just feels like it's taken uh, the production up another notch. You know, we saw Nashville do such a great job with it. But, I mean, this first round was a show <laughs> and a show of Kansas City. Irony of ironies. In the night that the Kansas City uh, community, the epicenter of the Chiefs Kingdom, hosted the 2023 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs, with the 31st pick, the last pick of the first round, choose – a person who played high school football in Kansas City at Lee's Summit High School and became the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year at Kansas State, the Big 12 champions, Felix and Aduke Uzama. And there are a lot of folks in the kingdom that are excited about King Felix being a part of the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, a lot of people, you being number one, this guy's <laughs> trying to keep it inside, but he's freaking he's out right now. He's a good player, man. Yeah. He's a good player. <laughs> I'm excited as well, though. I mean, just first of all, an awesome story, like you said. The Chiefs are Super Bowl champions, so they're picking last in the first round. They get to celebrate with the Lombardi Trophy on stage as they make their pick in Kansas City, the first time the draft has ever been here, and you take a kid from Kansas City, I mean, that's just remarkable. You can't draw that up. If this was in draft day two, the movie, we'd be like, <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm sure that would happen. It just happened in real life. And not only is it a great story, Felix is also a heck of a player who's going to help us win right away. Coach Reed just said that in his press conference. He thinks Felix can help us on day one, both the versus the pass and versus the run. Let's talk about his career a little bit at K-State. Uh, the 2022 Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, a second team All-American last season. Very productive in his career. A lot of times we see players that have a great skill set, but it didn't really translate in college, but the coaches say, hey, we can get the best out of this guy. That's not really the case with Felix. He has a great skill set, and it translated to college. Uh, he had 19 and a half sacks and 25 and a half tackles for loss over the last two seasons, played in 33 career games, including all 14 of K-State's games last season. A very productive player uh, who's going to be productive hopefully right away here for the Chiefs. Defensive line coach Joe Cullen did an incredible job last year with the defensive line. Think of Chris Jones having the best year of any interior defensive lineman in the league. He's going to have a lot of fun with Felix and Yuduke Uzama. <laughs> but he'll also see that he's already in Calc 2. When you study the video of King Felix, he does a lot of NFL things already, meaning moves, setup moves, counter punches, uh, good on twists. Uh, watch his plays against Tulane. There was a twist they ran against Tulane, a really good team. He wrecked Texas Tech. I mean, there was he was just obliterated sometimes uh, with different moves uh, against an offensive tackle. And then in the Big 12 championship game, when they beat TCU, there's a great rip up and under move that he makes. So when you watch Felix, you see a guy that already seems to be ahead of the learning curve in what it takes to be successful as an edge rusher and as an edge defender, because he'll play the run as well, he seems to be ahead of the curve coming out of college. He has a great toolbox 
already. The reality is a lot of times these edge rushers who are so much better than everyone else in high school and in college, they have like one or two moves that they just always work because the players around them aren't as good. But once they get to the NFL, everyone's good and it doesn't work all the time and it's much more difficult. Felix is not that player. He has a ton of pass rushing moves already and is very cerebral. Uh, he has a plan of attack whenever he's going against the opposing offensive lineman and tries out all these different things to find success. And that will work in the NFL. Daniel Jeremiah Maya from NFL.com wrote this about his pass rushing toolbox. Uh, he said, and I quote, he has a violent slap rip move, a nifty spin, and a quick hand swipe maneuver. He is also effective as a looper. So he can do a whole bunch of different things. He doesn't have just one thing he's really good at. He's not just a bull rusher or just a hand fighter. He's a defensive end that can do a little bit of everything. And that's what you want in the NFL, particularly in a first round pick. It's a great point, Matt, because in my brief 29 previous years in the NFL, I'll see edge rushers that'll take two to three years to get those moves down, or at least to develop those moves, because you're right, one or two moves can get you through college. King Felix is already ahead of that, uh, and you see how he'll use things to, he'll have a plan. You always hear about guys when they evaluate, hey, he needs a better plan. Felix will have a plan going in, and I love it the fact that some of his biggest games were against the biggest opponents. And that's a good sign. The other thing, a ball hawk. Um, when Daniel Jeremiah made that evaluation, six force fumbles led FBS um, in doing so at Kansas State. When you look at the fact that he had four sacks in one game against TCU as a junior, originally it was going to be an NCAA record six sacks. And they reviewed that and thought, well, maybe that's not a sack. So they reduced it to four, but it's still four. I mean, there were times he would just take a game and dominate it. And he has a great blend of power but also bend, which is hard to find. Sometimes you have a player who has great power, but they're not very athletic. They're not getting around the offensive tackle. Or you have a player who is very athletic. They're going to run right by the offensive tackle, but not a lot of power. Well, Felix really has both. So here's a few things from, from, from some draft guides. Uh, this is from Dane Brugler from The Athletic. He said, and I quote, he plays hard and mixes up his rush to keep his pursuit alive, which is what he does best. He projects as a physical face-up power rusher with the impact potential Potential to compete for an NFL starting role as a rookie with big time power and strength. But he's more than just a power rusher. This is from Pro Football Focus, who call them one of the bendiest defensive linemen in this entire class. And Yudike Uzama is one of the best edge benders in this draft class. He is the type of edge rusher that is going to convert a lot of pressures to sacks because of that. Of his 89 pressures the past two seasons, 21 ended up as sacks. He's one of the higher floor pass rushers in this class. How often do you see it that a player has so many pressures and never translates to sacks, and you have to be like, well, he's getting pressure on the quarterback. You want them to finish those plays, and Felix did that in college. Yeah, Felix is definitely a finisher. Lance Erline uh, gave him the comp of Dante Fowler Jr., the Dallas Cowboys, and if the Chiefs get that. The other thing to think about is who he's in the same room with. You now have in consecutive classes here, George Karloftis, an edge rusher, and you've got Felix and Yuduke Uzama. You take that with some of the veterans in there. Mike Dana is now a veteran, but you have two guys now that are in staggered years in their NFL careers who could be not only great individually, but great as a team. I could see these two guys being an awesome duo. This reminds me of what we did at linebacker a couple years ago, yeah. where you take Willie Gay Jr. in the second round and then take Nick Bolton in the second round a year later, and we had the same conversation. We're going to have two really skilled athletic linebackers growing together in the middle of this defense, and they just won a Super Bowl, and both guys played a huge role in winning that Super Bowl. Now we have the same thing happening at defensive end, where you have two very young, talented, skilled defensive ends that are going to grow together in this defense and also add in Charles Amenihu in this who's still a pretty young player who's under contract for a couple years here in Kansas City who can do a lot of things on defense as well as a versatile player so the future is so bright for this defense already so many young players that made giant contributions last season to help this team win a Super Bowl and now add King Felix to the mix uh, the sky is the limit for what this defense can achieve moving forward I'm so excited to get to training camp in just a few months curious to see how the broken hand is doing he broke this hand late in the game against Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. And so that might hinder a little bit of his, his uh, productivity right away, but he's also won, and again, won in big games. A champion team, Matt, is getting a champion player. 
And yeah. so that's what's really exciting. It really is. I love his mindset. I love everything about him. Yep. Uh, when he was at the local pro day uh, a few weeks ago, Coach Reed just mentioned in his press conference he had a chance to speak with Felix and kind of figure out what he's all about and just loved uh, meeting with him and, and getting to know him. And now he's a chief and gets to uh, join his hometown team and hopefully go get another Super Bowl. So you Lee Summit Tiger fans, you know, what's Drew Locke thinking? He was there, right? He's a <laughs> Lee like, Summit guy. I know Felix. Yeah, I, know, yeah. <laughs> I remember he's a little kid, like walking down the hallway at school. Uh, and he was a little bit undersized when he came out of high school. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Nope. King Felix is in the King Dumb. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, just do your own little study. You'll like what you're seeing for the newest Kansas City Chief, the Chief's first round pick, the first ever draft held in Kansas City, a Kansas City player who was a champion at Kansas State. Felix and Yuduke Uzama. Ten, five, touchdown! Lock it down! And the celebration begins at Arrowhead.